And welcome back. Now this week we're going to be talking about the analog inputs to Raspberry Pi, which of course, as we know, amount to a total of zero. So uh, when I was playing about with my Pi here, being an Arduino, I thought, oh, I know, I can just measure some voltage and turn up one of those little uh, NeoPixel things. And then, of course, immediately discovered, oh, yes, of course, we haven't got any analog pins on here, have we? No surprise, really. I mean, I did sort of know that, as we all do, um, if you have a, a, a Pi. So I thought, right, let's see what we can do about that. So I did a search on the internet for some analog to digital converter chips, and of course immediately stumbled across the microchip one. And then, I'm not the first person to think of this, uh, I discovered a little kit that uses that microchip uh, format. So I thought, well, rather than reinvent the wheel, let's just buy the, buy the kit itself. More money than I'd normally want to spend, but uh, just to get the thing off the ground, I thought, fine. So that's what we're ending up down here, this um, Raspio Analog Zero. Um, you can just about make out the uh, name of the website there. It looks all very neat. And the documentation that uh, comes with it um, is second to none. I've got to say, it's absolutely superb. So what's uh, what's to be done then about the analog inputs? Well, basically you would have to use some kind of bus. So I squared C, SPI, well, one of those two really, <laughs> I haven't got much choice. Uh, and that's exactly what this little board does. Now this is the um, board for it, if I can get it the right way up. So what happens in the um, Raspberry Pi world is that whereas we in the Arduino world have shields, they have hats, which stands for hardware attached on top. Yes, really. Uh, so this series of pins basically it fits over this one's these pins here that's on the uh, Raspberry Pi via one of these sockets. So then these sockets goes underneath. So that that goes through there like that. You can probably just make out. See they fit on there like that. That then plugs on there, and then that all attaches on top. Hence the hat hardware attached on top. It really does mean that. Now what that means of course is that you've then blocked off all these pins here. So whereas in the Arduino world we'd expect pins to be sticking up here. So what he's done here, and what many people do in fact, is expose all those GPIO pins again as a second row next to it. Now you might think, hang on a minute, there's, there's more pins here, this double row of 20, than there is in that single row there. Yes, well spotted. But what um, they've done in these double rows is have multiple ground pins. Um, they've got a couple of 5 volt pins at the top here, and the first two there. Um, so if you take all those out, these in fact do make up the rest. So the idea is then you put uh, a header, which <laughs> it's in the box behind me, just a sec. Uh, no, it wasn't in the box behind me. I can't find it, in fact. But it's something like this. I mean, this is a nice red one. The one that was applied with the kit was, in fact, uh, black. But I like coloured stuff. So basically, this this header then just plugs into those holes. There, you can see that. You have to snap it off the right size. As an Arduino, you'd probably know this as, as a matter of fact. But anybody watching this who's just got a Raspberry Pi may not be quite so familiar with it. So that's that's what happens, right? So the double set of pins here, single exposes them all again and then in the middle you've got room for a chip uh, another set of headers here for the analog port so you've got seven on here which brings it up to nano standard and what else well just a couple of components just to bring things in line he's also brought out um where's my little pointy thing rather than my fingers right so um he's also brought out the five volts here and 3.3 .3 and ground and then some little bits in the middle there just to add a few components. Um, you will see in the documentation that I just showed you where he solders some stuff on here. In fact he solders them on the underneath to keep it out of the way so it looks nice and neat on top. As a prototype I'd say that's fine. It's all a bit messy I think otherwise. So as a prototype it's good and you can measure the analogs. Uh, you put an, a, an eight-way header in here socket um, yeah, and it works. Well, I assume it works. As you can see, I haven't actually built it yet, but I mean, I've read about it enough and I'm, I'm sure it does work. So we will build it up and make sure it, it works according to what we want. Now, the chip that the, um, he's chosen here is in fact the MCP3008, which gives you, well, as it shows you here, eight analog pins. But 
rather surprisingly, um, he's chosen the 10-bit chip. Now that 10-bit means you get values from 0 to 1023, exactly the same as it is for the Arduino. So from that point of view, you go, well, what's the problem? That, that is what we expect, is it not? So that works. Yes, that's fine. But I've also done a video or two perhaps on the Arduino where you can increase that sensitivity. And there is a drop-in replacement chip, which he does in fact mention, give him credit, um, that gives you 12-bit resolution. So that's 0 to 4096, um, which I just happen to have here somewhere. So this this is the new one, I believe. Trying to get that in focus is a little bit tough. Well, that's no, that's the original one. So the other one must be in here. Here we are. So that's the drop-in replacement that we'll be trying out. Okay, so let's um, build this up and just make sure the analog bits all work exactly as we'd expect. If I have to write a little sketch, no, oh, don't call them sketches, do we? What do we call them? I don't know. Python programs, maybe. Well, well, whatever it is, we'll write one. Very simple one, just to make sure it all works. Here we have the built unit. I mean, quite frankly, it was very simple to put together. Tedious, I think, is the word I'd use because um, you've got all these little things to uh, solder up on the underneath and then this 41 here. And now I've got a very small soldering iron bit, but even then it was quite tight to get inside here. But let me show you my soldering iron. I'm going to have to switch between video workstation and soldering workstation over here so bear with me so this is my soldering iron still switched on and that's the bit i've got and that's not the finest bit you can get by any means and certainly wouldn't be any good for uh, surface mount devices smd components for this it was okay although the cone shape did mean it sort of could touch two pins at the same time if you're not careful so I've got several other bits. I might swap that out next time I do a, a little tiny thing like this with lots of pins. But anyway, apart from being somewhat tedious to put all these uh, soldering joints in, it was pretty straightforward. Now the other thing I do have here to remind me to tell you about is this. We've mentioned it before. It's an IC pin leg straightener. Uh, it's got that size, that size, that's a dill, and that's the wide bodied dill. So what you do, you drop your IC into here squeeze it and your pin legs are perfectly straight for putting into the socket otherwise they're slightly splayed out now i have one here to do if we look at this chip end on if you like you can see that the legs there are very slightly splayed out goodness knows why they do that i don't know perhaps it's to stop them falling out when you flip it underneath but whatever it's it's rubbish you couldn't put that as it stands into that socket okay it just it just doesn't fit so all you do is drop it into this thing here like that and then you give it a squeeze and then you take it back out again and now if you look at it dead on end on rather you'll see that the legs are now totally square and that will fit into that socket no trouble at all as i say we'll be trying that chip out a little bit later but in the meantime then this is the original chip the 10 bit um all i've done here is put a dupont cable into uh channel one analog channel one because obviously there are eight channels here at the moment from a0 to a7 so the other end is just sort of floating about at the moment so let's flip over to the code window and um Look at the bit of code there. Now this is Python code, fairly straightforward. I mean, there's only half a dozen lines there, isn't there? The way you uh, invoke Python, if you've never done it before on a, on a Pi, is simply to go to this Raspberry thing at the top, click that, Programming, Python 3. They've left Python 2 in here as well, because that was the old standard, 2.7, but things have moved on since then. So Python 3 is, click that, and you'll get either this or the runtime screen depending on what preferences you've chosen as part of the options so in the options where you say configure idle you can say under general at startup what do you want an edit window open shell window and just play about and see which one you like best anyway this this is a file that i've loaded to run it all i've got to do is press five um, if it's not saved so if i hit a couple of space lines and then back again so now this is not saved when you hit f5 it should uh, prompt you to do that 
Source must be saved. OK to save? Yes, it is. As soon as I press OK, it will open up a, a Python shell window. There it goes and splats over everything else, of course. And there it is reading the details in. So let me just resize that, move it out of the way a little bit. There we are. So what that's reading in now is the channel zero, the very first pin on that analog pin. So it's reading in the value here on device zero. That means SPI device zero because there's only two available on the Python to dedicated hardware pins for SPI. Uh, printing out the value times 1023 because that's what we're used to as Arduinites. If you if you're not interested in 1023, if you want the actual voltage, then just multiply that by 3.3 because that's the maximum we can uh, read here. And then I've just uh, this is the equivalent of a delay in Arduino terms. That's a delay of half a second. So you have to say import time at the top. Oh, and to get this this NP, MCP3008, you have to do that import as well. These are all Python things, and I guess the best way to do it is, is just do it for a bit, learn it, get a book. Raspberry Pi for dummies, for example. Okay, anyway, so it's reading those values, and you can, as you can see, it's all over the shop at the moment. And if I, if I touch this, you'll probably see it jump about a bit. In fact, it still seems to be jumping out fairly much everywhere. Now, if I hold it on the, this little jumper, that's 3.3 .3 volts. Whoops. Trying to do this across benches is... Oh. Oh. The DuPont cable has snapped off, look, the little, the little bit on top. God, what poor quality is that? Don't get me started about the quality of stuff from China. Believe me, <laughs> I'm going to have to find another cable now. Luckily, I've got a few thousand in the cupboard behind me. Back soon. Okay, right, another cable. Still orange though. <laughs> Continuity, yay, there's something. So if I hold it onto this little jumper which says what's the voltage reference, you'll see if it goes to 1023 because that is the 3.3 .3 volt reference voltage. And remember, this can only measure up to 3.3 .3 because the Python, uh, the Pi, the Raspberry Pi is a 3.3 .3 volt device. Okay, we'll come on to how to measure higher voltage in a sec. Now if I hold it onto the zero on that board, if you remember, I said there's some there's a zero thing. Let's just go back to the, the main workbench. So on this board here, you've got um, 3.3 volts, a bit of circuitry here just for putting in your own stuff, 5 volts and ground. Okay, so if I hold it onto the zero one, which is that one there. Hmm. I was hoping that was going to go to absolute zero. Not quite as zero as we uh, might have thought then. Oh, and it's and it's stopped. I know it's, now, the way I'm connecting to the Raspberry Pi is via something called VNC, well, and SSH. So what's happening is that uh, my Windows PC has fired up VNC Viewer, which is a free program. I've used it for a long time, and not for this, but generally and it's connected to the Pi. You, on the Pi you do have to say allow the VNC viewer to, to connect to me which is why we have this this thing up here where it says VNC. So what happens is that sometimes it sort of freezes, I'm not quite sure why. So it's not quite down to zero but then again sometimes the Arduino didn't go down to zero either. Now that's at 3.3 volts and should stay at 1023 but as you can see occasionally it says 1022.004. Now, of course, this device is not that accurate. So when we see these stupidly long figures like this, it's just nonsense. We're not actually measuring that voltage at all. It's just some random fluctuation. So what we could do with really is just formatting this output a little bit to whole figures, the nearest whole figure, really. Now, that we can do pretty easily. So we need to format this. So we say, uh, single quote, squiggly bracket. Um, how many should we have? Uh, well, naught really. We don't want any decimal places, so it's colon dot naught f squiggly and single dot format. Where am I? I've got four different screens open at the moment, and now I spelled it wrong. Format open bracket, and now of course we need a bracket at the end. I don't know if you saw. There was a little um. Help came up when I typed in format. Does it come up on the screen? 
yes it does there we are you can see that so Python is very nice like this and will give you these little hints about what you should be typing in the same happened when I did this MCP 3008 um, I'll just do that again so you can see it so if I there we are so it says we've got a channel differential equals false so you can have differential inputs here but let's not go there maximum voltage 3.3 Fine. Now you don't have to measure up to 3.3. Say you've got something that measured, I don't know, one volt, just as an example. What you'd have to do on this board here, where that little jumper is connected to um, the VREF reference voltage to 3.3, take that off and connect the VREF to a one volt reference. And then the 1023 values that we're seeing jumping around here is in fact between zero and one volt, not one. 0 and 3.3 .3 as it is at the moment. So you can measure any voltage up to 3.3 .3, but no more. Okay so there we are we've made this little change now. Um, if I press F5 again it should prompt me to say do you want to save it? Yes we do. And it should restart. Here we are we're restarting the uh, actual Python and there we are now we have whole figures. We can go better than that we can make it more sensitive and I'm going to connect up the other chip and a potentiometer on here and we can see then how it changes things a little bit all right 4096 steps rather than 1023 could be interesting right so I've um, connected up a potentiometer here I'm just rebooting the Pi at the moment which you can probably see it's trying to connect to the Pi but there's nothing to connect to at the moment so we'll just let that run so this chip we've we're saying that this is um, this is an MCP three zero zero eight. It has one o two three steps of resolution because it's a ten bit chip. Uh, let me just show you that while that's um, booting up. It's coming up soon. Be there. Um, if we look in the browser, this is the chip. We're looking at uh, this one here. Uh, channel zero to channel seven is on the right hand side. That's the one we got, and. Well, the other ones are just very simple to connect up. Power, a couple of decoupling capacitors, and the SPI pins. I'll put this data sheet, which some people find a little bit dry, and to be quite honest, so do I. But every now and again, you just hit a little nugget of information in there. And if you want to know anything about the chips, this is where you got to go. This is the manufacturer's data sheet, and, well, it, it will tell you everything you ever wanted to know, and a whole lot more that you didn't about those chips. Right. Um, the um, the one we're going to try in a minute though is this one here, so it's pretty much the same. The numbers changed there; it's got this two in it, and we're going to do the three two o eight. Um, exactly the same. Part of this one says twelve bit. If you notice, the other one said ten bit. Okay, that's the only difference. They run from anything from two point seven volts to five point five volts. So these chips are good for anywhere that you need analog inputs. So I don't know, picks. Pies, Arduinos, although we do tend to have a lot of analog pins on there already, but if you need more, this is the way to do it. Ah, right, now the Pi's um, booted up, so let's go back to the code window. So now let's just run that, F5, and off we go. Right, so what that is now doing is, is reading this value on here. So if I turn it down to absolutely nothing, so we get, oh, we actually get zero this time, not something close to zero. And as I wind it up, it gets bigger and bigger. Now, of course, there are quite big jumps here because we're sleeping for half a second between values. So as I'm turning, of course, lots of things are happening. And there we are. That's a full full volume, as it were, 1023, occasionally 1022. Something to bear in mind, that slight fluctuation at the end of there, if you're actually reading an analog value, really it's best to take everything over lot like 1020 as being full value otherwise you might never reach 1023 for dimming bulbs or something like that you know if you want it on maximum brightness okay so that's that's all working fine right so what we're going to do now is take that chip out and put in that one there which is the 12 bit and uh, perhaps we'll speed up the the delay here a little bit maybe every 0.1 so we can see how many steps can be meaningfully read okay let's swap it out back soon the new chip's been put in the 12-bit one um, we've just got to change the code now because that's um, 4096 steps we've got now 4096 and 
Oh yeah, I've changed the time down here to 0 0.25 just to give it a little bit more urgency in its output. That's it, don't have to do anything else, so F5. Yes, we do want to save. And off it goes. Right, let's have a look now. If I um, turn these, let's turn it all the way down to zero. Or not, perhaps. Okay, the lowest it's going to go to is two, for reasons best known to the chip. Hmm, okay. And okay, it goes all the way around to 4096. Well, if you can see there's a 4092 appearing every now and again. So the extremes seem to be a little bit um, off, don't they? But apart from that, then, yeah, it seems to be okay. Cool. Okay, so this is a better resolution now than what you might find on an Arduino Uno or Nano. Uh, whether you need that level of resolution, so it's probably about, what, a millivolt, something like that? Because we're only using 3.3 .3 as well. If we were to um, divide 3.3 .3 by 4096, it actually comes out to uh, 0.008. So that's just under the millivolt per step. Just under the millivolt. Point. 0.8 of a millivolt in fact <laughs> get it right 0.8 of a millivolt um, now if we were to just prove the point that I'm just doing this on the calculator if we have um, 5 volts divided by 1023 that comes out as 0 0.048 yes that's it's about 5 just under 5 millivolts 4.8 millivolts actually 5 millivolts per step for the Arduino so that's 5 to just under 1 that's quite a difference isn't it so if you're Say you were measuring, for example, I don't know, what, what gives out a very low voltage? A microphone or a stylus or something? Not, I don't know why you'd be doing that with either an Arduino or a Pi. But you could do it now with um, a 12-bit um, ADC chip, but you couldn't do that with a 10-bit because the difference in voltage, if it went from 0 to 2 millivolts, the Arduino would say it's still the same value of 0, whereas the Pi now with its 12-bit chip on it would say oh yes there's there's two different distinct values there three in fact from zero to one to two and so on so there may be some some uh, usefulness in having a chip that's a bit more sensitive let me show you where I got the stuff from this um, analog zero kit just so that you can see right here it is so the Raspio Analog Zero, that's exactly the, the one we've got. Uh, £10, that's what I paid, yes, that's, that is correct, £10. A little bit more than what I wanted to pay, to be quite honest, but the chip itself, I think, is probably about a couple of quid. It says, for one, it's £2.56. You see there? Now, you couldn't buy just one for £2.56 because the postage and all sorts of other stuff. Uh, but say you bought a hundred, so you buy a hundred for a hundred ninety-four. That's one pound ninety-four each. Could let's call it two quid then, given that this chap's making kits and all that. So it's two quid. So it's eight quid left now for the board itself, which is quite a nice little board, and it's you know all double-sided. You can have it whichever way up you want. It's got a headers, and also in that I'm told you actually he's um, included. He's included this, it's an LDR, so that you can use this to play about with and detect different light levels. So that comes into the kit, uh, plus a resistor or two, so just so that you can connect this up meaningfully. So as a kit itself, it's probably not, not too bad value for money, to be quite honest. And I'm quite impressed with it, the quality is very good. And as I say, the documentation that comes with this, I'll show you the paper version. Let's see if we can find the PDF. So here's the user guide, the very thing I was waving in front of you um yeah it gives a couple of ideas of what you can do but more to the point it does go into quite some detail about what you can do what you mustn't do certainly for a beginner which i guess where this video is aimed at this is this is a good value for money kit actually and i'm guessing he must be uk based but hopefully he sells through other avenues because all you people in the States and Canada and Australia might find it difficult to get this one. 
so okay that's great that's that's uh, not bad at all in fact so we're going to leave it there i hope you found this interesting i know this wasn't arduino related exactly it was definitely pi related with the actual board whoops board behind me there but the chip itself you can use for any microcontroller as long as it uses spi you're okay right great i hope you found it useful if you did give me a thumbs up and um, put some comments down below and i'll see you in the next video I hope you're finding these videos useful and interesting. There are plenty more videos to choose and a couple are shown below. And if you'd like to subscribe to this channel, just click on my picture below and enjoy the rest of the videos. Thanks for watching.